Can you live forever? That is the question of today's video. Somebody sent me this. I watched a little bit of it. I figured maybe I'll do a reaction to a video to this because it's a little cringeworthy. So let us uh, get started here. Basic truth of biology that the second you reach maturity, you exit adolescence and become an adult, you start dying, you degrade, and then you expire. This is called the aging process. And you maybe first start noticing it in your 40s, long after it's already begun, because there are visible symptoms. You get. Yeah, I think uh, everybody goes to, uh, through this to a different level. <clears throat> uh, I mean, my parents really haven't aged all that much. And it, I, I don't know. I think everybody goes through it uh, to a different level. Wrinkly and bald. <laughs> and if you can't stay away from the pizza, you get a little fat. And that's kind of inevitable. Uh, or we've been told it's inevitable. But a man called Brian Johnson. Now, I warn you, before we even really get started, I did watch the first, I don't know, however many minutes it is. It is a little rough to watch. Has decided it's not. I think even Tucker Carlson here it thinks the same thing. Necessarily inevitable. He was a very large figure in the tech world, made a ton of dough, and then started thinking about his body and the nature of life and the future of human existence and has become. I find it strange that so many people are, are obsessed with living forever. I don't, I don't understand it pretty famous recently for saying that he has, in a way, begun to reverse the aging process and maybe even cracked the code that limits the human lifespan. But watch him explain. It's hard to believe tech millionaire Brian Johnson is 46 years old, but no matter- Not really, I mean, he looks actually older than that. His chronological <laughs> age, he's striving for the biological age of an 18 year old. His team of 30- Can you imagine living with this guy? It's gotta be awful. Doctors utilize all the latest tech. The plan is rigorous. At $2 million a year, a life like That's this normal. is out of reach for almost everyone. And this is what I take on a daily basis of supplements. It's Look at this shit. Look at, like, how, what? What? I mean, come on, man. Alphabetized and we have a year supply of everything we do. He calls his all-encompassing protocol Project Blueprint. Blueprint was born out of trying to fix like my own problem, book. but then taking care of my family, my kids and my parents, my friends. It's generated a steady churn of shock headlines. He once injected himself with his son's plasma. It's part of his quest to live forever, which he believes may happen in our lifetime. Seems a little spooky. That's a weird statement. So you can live forever within your own lifetime. How does that work? But also interesting, time and we're doing would this interview because specify we're that there is a limit to that. Our smartest friends suggested it. You gotta talk to this guy, Brian Johnson. He's genuinely interesting. And he seems to be. He is the founder and CEO, among other companies, a company called Kernel that creates devices that can monitor brain activity. And he joins us now in set. Brian, great to see you. Great to see you as well. Thanks right. for having me. So I've got a bunch of different questions, some practical, some... This guy's got, like, hair implants. I mean, I'm not making fun of the guy. I mean, I, I feel like he's really got some issues. Topical, <laughs> I don't even know what to call him. Um, you're, how old are you, 46? Mm. 46. 46. You don't look it, I will say, famously. Um, so how, as a practical matter, what's your regimen for slowing or reversing mm. the aging process? Uh, what we do is we measure every organ in my body, my heart, my lungs, my liver, my pancreas, my brain, and we biologically age each organ. So you say, how old is the heart? So even though I'm 40. I feel like that would age you just doing that. I mean, can you imagine how annoying that would be doing every day? Six, my heart is 37. My left ear is 64. My lung capacity is age 18. My cardiovascular capacity is the top 1.5% of 18 year olds. And so you need to know where your baseline is. And so we- But aren't 18 year olds going downhill these days? Measured my entire body. I've become the most measured person in history. And once you have all those numbers, then you can go to therapies and say, can you slow the speed of aging? And can you reverse the aging damage that has happened? And that's been the project for the past three years. And you can, you think? You can, yeah. For example, I, I slowed my speed of aging. So inside your body, there's a clock with how fast you're aging. How annoyed is this guy going to be if he gets hit by his own Tesla and that's it? And that clock is determined by uh, DNA methylation. I have reduced my speed of aging by the equivalent of 31 years. So I now age 
uh, in a more generalized way to say it, 7.6 months for every 12 months that pass. Okay. So I get the remaining months for free, which is I've slowed down my speed of aging. So the damage that accumulates in my body is much slower. And so we've done this through diet and exercise and sleep and a bunch of other therapies. But yes, we can quantifiably measure how fast my aging, what are the age, uh, age of my bio of my organs, and then we can use therapies to go about it. And so we do everything according to science and data. This is not me offering an opinion. This is my entire body on display for the world of what happens when you apply the world's best science into a body. I mean, oof. This, this guy is trying to play the role of God here. So I'm assuming you quit smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never started, but oh, yeah. you never started. Okay, okay, good. So that's like step one. Quits exactly okay, right. Fine, that's, just yeah. to make sure we have that uh, on the record. What specifically do you eat? Uh, I have three meals a day. So breakfast is broccoli, cauliflower, black lentils, garlic, and ginger. The next meal of the day is uh, pea protein, pomegranate juice, macadamia nuts, walnuts, flaxseed, uh, sunflower, lecithin, and the final meal of the day is berries, nuts, uh, fruits. Okay eating like this guy this guy sounds like the uh Furman diet the gas diet um so <clears throat> pizza and oreos totally out <laughs> yeah they are not in supply at the house so um why like if you could narrow down the foods that actually now i know tucker has a large amount of money as well but i feel like tucker looks better than the science project actually do reduce your lifespan and the quality of your life what would they be yeah, we what we tried to do with the diet is we said I'm not. I mean, this is not a hate video. This is just a uh, how much money do you have? And I, I know I've said if I had a ton of money, the weird level of weird that I would achieve would be uh, unknowable. But it would not be in this realm. If you take the frame that every calorie you put into your body has to fight for its life, what would that be? And so we went through. We referenced all the scientific literature. We said what has the best evidence. And then we put it into my body, then we measure. So if a given thing is supposed to do a thing in the body, it stays. And if it does it, it stays. If not, it's out. And so what I told you is that where every calorie is precisely designed. And these are population level studies. This is not just me. This is, could be applicable to you as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, we are very particular about what goes into my body and not a single calorie goes in that's not backed by science. What are the ones you, you definitely would not eat, like period? Uh, basically the standard American diet. Yeah. I mean, it's everybody bad. can agree it's about that. Really, yeah, it's, I knew it was bad. Like, like, we all know it's bad. I didn't know how bad. Like, once you understand the biochemical processes of what happened. I mean, even uh, the last video I did was about this. Even the, uh, even the ingredients in our, like, ketchup is so much worse than the ketchup that you find in Europe. What happens in your body when you eat these things? It's awful. Like what? I mean, it increases your speed of aging. Like you've got this clock and it's saying, how fast are you going to, how fast until disease develops or something goes wrong? And this clock just, you know, it will increase if you don't eat the right things. It, if you eat the right things, it will slow down. The wrong things speed it up. Let me just push you a little, a little more on yeah. this question. So like, what are the things you just would not put in your mouth specifically? Mm. I, yeah, I really does not want to answer pizza, questions. donuts. Junk food, fast food, processed food. Pizza is number one. Uh, yeah, I you know I don't eat red meat. Uh, I'm vegan, but uh -oh. you know, nothing against meat. So people can add meat to their diet. But you know, like red meat is not at the top of the things that makes the cut for science of wanting to extend life. Interesting. Um, how much time do you spend exercising? Uh, one hour a day. That's it. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, cardiovascular, weights, and stretching. So. Would it be fair to say that someone who followed your diet and your exercise regimen? The $2 million a year, that sounds normal. Would have similar effects to the ones you've enjoyed? Yes. So I've done this. I've made my entire project open source. It's yep. for free for everybody. I post my data, my recipes, my processes, my therapies. Everything is shared with everyone. And so tens of thousands of people around the world are doing this, and they're seeing remarkable results. So I've tried to reduce what I do into very simple things that are affordable for everybody. Um, two million dollars a year injecting yourself with your son's blood, right? That's right. Okay, why'd you do that? So it was we were looking into therapy. So the way that we, sounds like Hollywood. There's some of the stuff goes on in Hollywood. Approach blueprint is we <laughs> said. So what human humans have generated a lot of science over the past uh, couple decades, 
and we said, let's take all the science, let's yeah. rank them according to power laws of the best science ever done. Let's grade the evidence, then we'll see what we can apply from those into my body. And plasma infusions were one that was interesting. And so I was looking at it myself, and one day I was talking to my dad, and he said, I need to tell you, I had this really scary situation where he he's in the legal profession. He said, I wrote a brief, I walked away, I came back, and I saw that my words were a jumbled mess. I was experiencing- had too much protein in cognitive lapse and I wasn't aware of it. He's 71. He said, I'm terrified of losing my mind. Yes. And I said, dad, how interesting that you bring this up because right now the team and I are talking about plasma infusions and that some of the studies are looking at the effects on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other kinds of things like that. The studies are already out. It's caused by high protein. I mean, I, I answered this guy's question. He's got to watch this video. And so I said, if you're interested, I'm happy to give you a liter of my plasma. And then my 70 year old son was there and he's like, Hey, if you guys are doing it, I'm in We're like, great. We'll make this a family affair. Family so my son, sharing the plasma. Yeah. So my son gave me a liter of plasma. I gave my dad a liter Normal of plasma family affair. and the data showed that in me, there was no effect <laughs> that my biomarkers didn't change, but in my dad, his speed of aging reduced by 25 years. So he was aging at the rate of a 71 year old. And after the plasma infusion and continued for six months, it lessened to a 45 year old. So his clock dramatically slowed down. Interesting. Did and he, he feel better? He did. And his colleagues were saying, what's up? This is your, your, your hot, you're on fire. They're all going to be on that, uh, on that blood transfer. Plasma from his son. It's the only therapy that he did. Does it need to be a blood relative? No, it just blood typed. Okay. So now we're getting into the theories about taking the blood of children. I mean, so this is very common. We do Hollywood. organ transplants. We all donate blood. Like we've had that experience in our life. So it's just in a slightly different frame, but it's very much a part of. Well, it's a recognizable frame. And I, by the way, I'm not endorsing any of this. But, yeah. <laughs> but there is a frame, to use your word, uh, on the internet of like super rich tech billionaires living forever on the blood of children. Yeah. Not an appeal, not a super appealing frame, I would say. <laughs> yeah. This is that. Uh, yeah, yeah we did basically. it openly. We made a video out of it. We uh -huh. we made fun of it. We made a meme out of it. So yeah, we. this is how we've done the entire project is everything's open sourced. It's always discussed. We share all the data. But yes, it definitely feeds into many of the... Of the um, uh, this is just uh, too much, man. I mean, there's like vegan and then there's the this. People. Yeah, and not all of them seem baseless, I guess. <laughs> well, that's a lot of people said. Is like, <laughs> we, well, we I finally mean... got a glimpse. <laughs> So you're showing us what's happening. <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. Like the tech oligarch yeah. taking the blood of children. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. Yeah. yeah. Um, interesting. So I wonder, as I was. I don't even know what I can say here. Effect on you and your life. Like, what's it like to focus on your body that much? Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's uh, there's one thing about building a product. Like we oftentimes think of our as our work as our immortality. What we produce in our careers, our reputation, our accomplishments. Is that and a normal thing? When you Leave down in the comments way, if that's a normal thing. Product. You are your own best creation. And so it's been energizing. I've loved being consumed by it. I think that, um, yeah, it's one of the happiest endeavors I've done in my life. Really? Mm -hmm. I've taken the opposite approach. and I, <laughs> I'm not claiming it's superior to yours, um, but I had my, my appendix swell up and mm. burst. And mm. I never, and I had, of course, taken out. I never asked like what the appendix is because mm. I didn't really want to know. I don't know what a spleen is. Like I've really made an effort to not focus on those <laughs> things because it seems like a lot of self-focus mm. and it seems like a short trip from there to say narcissism, which is obviously yeah. death. I mean, this guy so, is permanent. Are you worried about that? Uh, my observation really is philosophical. I did this thought experiment where I was, when I was 21, I came this back guy's to Ecuador. Got too much I had mo I had lived among extreme poverty for two years, and I had this burning You're desire. You're on a Mormon mission. On a Mormon mission, yeah. yes. And I had this burning desire to be useful to the world. I didn't know what or how, and so I thought I'll make a whole bunch of money by age of 30, and then when I'm 30 years old and I have a whole bunch of money, I'll decide what to do then. And so I've been searching for this mission my entire life. You know, I've noticed a lot of that in Mormons. They they do they they kind of have that same preface. And upon doing that, I, I had, I organized this is no hate on Mormons friends, either. And I said, let's imagine we're existing in 2050. And this was 2016 at the time. And the world is amazing. What did we do in 2016 that would make that possible? 
And then I listened very intently to everybody's responses. Spend $2 million a year on supplements. Put them in a box. And I, um, I made a rule that I can't do anything inside that box. I have to do something outside that box. And what nobody was working on was trying to solve death. That it I was mean, always that's incons- not an uncommon thing for people to try to solve. So he's not new with Believable that you could try to legitimately conquer death. And that's what I set my sight on is. But you, what's interesting, I mean, now and now, okay, so we're at the philosophical part of this. And my friend who recommended this interview said, you know, he's really interesting on the, the practical stuff, the serum transfers and all that. But he's much more interesting on the philosophical questions. And I, I think you will be. So let me ask, you grew up in- I feel like Tucker does not want to be in his own studio right now. A world, a Mormon world, um, that believed and taught you that it had already solved the question of death. Exactly. (laughs) Through Jesus. Exactly. You no longer think that. Uh, It would be helpful if there was some evidence. Yeah. Well, he did raise it. Okay. Okay. Um, There's no evidence for this guy's So you've abandoned that worldview, or at least you're agnostic, I guess, would be the word on that worldview. Right. Not to get too personal, but I'm just interested because a lot yeah. of people. Would say, I mean, how many near death experiences are there too? They, you know, religious people, Christians would say, "Well, we've already solved death." Right. You know, don't need to solve that. It's solved. Um, but there's also, of course, no evidence that eternal life is possible in a in a corporal sense, physical sense. Right. Because it's never been done. So, what gives you faith that you can do it? Yeah. If you look at the speed in which artificial intelligence is advancing, uh, we are gaining new abilities we've never had. I feel like we're living in Atlantis right now, right before the the fall. Before in every domain of society. You pair that with our ability that we now, in this moment, we can predictably design biology and the physical world, atom by atom. You bring those things together for the first time in human history, one can say with a straight face that we may be able to go after death. Now, I'm not saying we can, I'm not saying it's guaranteed. I'm saying that it is rational and reasonable and supported Mm -hmm. by where the realities are today. And so with what I've been trying to do is to show a glimmer of hope that, because what I'm really trying to do is demonstrate age escape velocity. That is, so when one year of time passes, I remain the same biological age. So we're never going to arrest aging altogether. But if I, let's say I age- I just passed out. Age 0.4. And then I can reverse that 0.4 with therapies and stay the same age biologically. Right now, I'm 0.64. So I've already started at one and I'm all the way down to 0.64. If we keep on inching down, it might change everything. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to have a philosophical conversation it's another thing to say, I can be youthful and have energy and feel great. I think everybody wants that. Uh, 100%. Live long and I mean, prosper. But, yes. Sure. I mean, why Why do we got to go? I'm mean, $2 million in supplements a year. Like, you know, I've seen family members and other people that I know do this without $2 million a year in supplements. And that seems like a virtuous goal. And what you're doing to that extent is virtuous. I just wonder if, as someone who grew up in a religious community, if part of you maybe deep inside fears that when you start to say things like we can defeat death that you won't be smote down by the god of the universe yeah for assuming yeah his role yeah do you worry about that uh not in the least bit (laughs) (laughs) never never crossed well you're either very brave or very foolish (laughs) never crossed my mind really so when you say man tucker has the rich guy laugh down like you oh my gosh I can defeat death. Aren't you saying I'm God? Um, I'm saying that the universe speaks in irony. That's for sure. And that the story we've told is that God created us. And the actual story may be that we are going to create God. Oof. Hmm. Hmm. What kind of God? This is wow. the question we face the species. I mean, right now, we have organized society around capitalism. We we strive to make money. He, how much money has this guy made because of it? Power and wealth. We engage in warfare. You know, everyone's angling for their best interest. And I'm suggesting that this is not uh, about me trying to live forever. This is me trying right. to answer the most pressing question in existence. 
What? Living forever is in the title. Do we do as a species? Now, when death is inevitable, you're going to have an answer like, well, I'm going to live fast and die young, or I'm going to conquer territories and be immortal for my quests, or I'm going to make up your, your meaning of life game. But if death is not inevitable, we can extend our lifespans to some unknown horizon. The meaning making games we have the species all change. Of course. And that's what I'm suggesting we're there. We're, this moment is that. I mean, there, you know, many people through history have reached similar conclusions, mm -hmm. but not with similar technology to exactly affect those right. conclusions, right? So, um, or those. I, I mean, we don't know that. But, um, you know, history laughs at those people, and the story of history is men addled with hubris being humiliated. Yes. Uh, and so, I mean, I would say there's a great deal of evidence that you will be crushed and humiliated <laughs> for saying that. Just based, and I hope I hope that's not the case. Of yeah. course, but but everyone, every other living person who's reached the conclusion that you've reached, has been crushed and humiliated in the end, and we laugh at him. So, what yeah. makes you different? Yeah, I mean, I think it's likely inevitable that I will die the most ironic death. <laughs> <laughs> that is guaranteed to happen. Yes, that right? is like, so true. By the way, that's the message of the New Testament. Yeah. I mean, that's the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's the irony yes. book. By his Tesla, I guarantee it. I yes. mean, you I'm know, not the wasting first will any time. Exactly. Like, no, you're. So I will. We agree I, on that. I'll get hit by a bus, or I will you know, <laughs> choke taking a pill, or <laughs> right. like, like, it, you'll die of a broccoli OD. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's guaranteed to happen. So me aside, uh, I think the okay. Now I like you. I think that's just a <laughs> wonderful thing to say. You're right. That that is wisdom. It, it's guaranteed to yes. happen. And so hopefully this lives past me. But I think if like if you if you have another do another thought experiment with me. Let's imagine we're hanging out in the 25th century. We're listening to what they're saying about the early 21st century. Now in the same way we look at the 15th century, we compress that entire century into 10 things. 15 things. Yes, that's right. right. It, 99 percent of what happened then is just. I mean, I agree away. with them there. We don't care. It's just. And there's no record of it either. Exactly. Yes. And this moment, the same is going to be true. We have more recording, of course, of our of our existence. Yes. They did, but we're still going to be compressed in time. And so, 99 percent of what we do will be washed away. There'll be a small fraction that actually matters to future generations. Yes. And so if you ask or that they'll question, even know about or have any way of knowing about or they'll care about. Yes, that's right. And so if you pose that question from the 25th century, and so that really for me creates this clarity of thought. Like if you try to really clear your head of all the noise happening now, what do they say right now that we did as a species in this moment that allowed intelligence to thrive in this part of the galaxy? And this is why I would say is this is when Homo sapiens realized that they reached a technological threshold where the only objective of existence was to continue to exist at the basic level. So this is don't die. That when AI, when we're on the eve. I mean, he's got a, he's got a point with some of this. Of giving birth to superintelligence. And we have to ask all the basic questions of our existence. Who are we? Why do we exist? How do we operate in society? Do I have a job? Do I don't? Like, what are the answers to these basic questions? It's like Vanilla Sky, the movie. And what I'm suggesting is our existence is going to be compressed into one statement we can all say, which is don't die. And don't die is the most played game by everybody on planet Earth every second of every day. We breathe every few seconds. We look both ways before we cross the street. We throw out moldy food. So don't die is played more than capitalism. Don't die is played more than religion the most played game in existence. And that's the thing we can rally behind in this moment. It's it's interesting though. I mean, the fact that you, I think that's partly true, but the fact that you have to articulate it suggests it's not entirely true. Mm. In other words, the way that people, human beings differ from other animal species is not just language and the imposable thumb. It's that humans are the only animal that kill themselves. Mm -hmm. They need to be convinced that life is worth living. Yeah. And I wonder what you make of that. I don't have the answer to that. Yeah. I don't know why, but that does has always struck me. As I mean, we're the only ones are aware of death. Dog, well, or pigs or horses or any other animal. Why or monkeys for that? Yeah. Matter. Why? Why do people kill themselves? Who's more why free, the one that doesn't know or the one who does? Yeah, we. I mean, in some way, in some ways, we're brilliant. In many ways, we are idiotic and insane. You know, like I had this problem where I would overeat every night at seven p.m. To deal with the stresses of the day, I would eat too much food, junk food. 
I was 60 pounds heavier than I am now. Why did I do that? Why did I inflict this harm upon myself every night? And afterwards, I'd say, I'm changing tomorrow. This is my last day, no more. But I did it anyways. I just couldn't stop myself from these self-destructive behaviors. It's such a weird thing. And so now what I did is I... But hold on, what do you make of that? I mean, and every person has experienced that, whether it's drinking yeah. or sex or food is very, very common in this country. Yeah. Um, but why does that happen? Because it, it kind yeah. of puts a lie to the, to use your term frame again, to the evolutionary biology frame that we use to explain human behavior. Yes. Like, right? Yes. Why do we act against ourselves? And, and, and is it us acting against ourselves or is it a yeah. force outside of ourselves acting on us? Like, so what's the answer? Agreed. And we, we treat planet Earth I'm, the same I way. I usually make more commentary than this. We treat each other. Like, but why? Exactly. I, I mean, I understand. Look, every, evolutionary biology, common sense, explains why I might hurt you Yeah. to steal your stuff. Exactly. And to make it more likely that, you know, my kids reproduce and my line continues. I mean, it, it's not hard. It's wrong, but it's understandable. Why do I hurt myself in ways that don't bring me pleasure, yeah. that are purely destructive? You can see why people believe in demons. Yeah. But you, I don't think you do believe in demons. So what do you believe? What is that? Yeah. I mean, on this question, there's probably many answers on why. The solution that I've come up with is I endeavored to build an algorithm that could take better care of me than I can myself. But you still have to follow it. And you still... Yeah, I mean, that, 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 I mean, that already exists. That already exists. That, that has already existed for a very long time. You know, prior to the industrialization of everything, none of this existed. We had, I mean, we might not have lived longer, but we didn't have time to sit around and contemplate this. I think in a world where AI runs everything and AI does everything for you, you're going to be even lazier than, I'm going to close on this. You're going to be even lazier than you were Prior, prior to that, so before the Industrial Revolution and around, the, like, if you look at the happiness level of humans in 1820 in America, it was off the charts. It was off the charts. And then some, uh, you know, people from Germany and a couple other countries came in here and all of a sudden brought their ideas. And we started adopting those ideas. And all of a sudden, misery just, you know, it set in. And that, you know, and this industrialized everything now has made it so as every year we have less and less to do less and less to do and we're more and more in time to sit around and do what with our time you know try to figure out uh you know immortality i guess for this guy because two million dollars a year uh supplement re regime where's it going to get you you know where where's it where's it going to get you anyway that is my thoughts on this, I think it's just another guy with too much time on his hand, too much money in his pocket, and trying to figure out a problem that doesn't really exist. Because it's never going to happen unless you change your DNA. It, it, you know, you have to change your DNA in order to change your lifespan, and you'd have to figure out how to do that first. Anyway, that is, uh, you know, leave down below what you think about this. I watched it a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, it just, I don't know. I think it's somebody with too much money and too much time. Anyway, talk to you next time.